In today's video, I want to show you how to create this transition, which is based on this transition from Ben TK's Cambodia travel video. This is a really cool effect, and it's something that's going to give your viewers a very unique experience when watching your videos, but because of how unique it is, it's a little bit more complex than most of the transitions that I cover on my channel, so I'm going to be doing this video as just like a standard screen recording tutorial instead of the usual more edited style you see on my channel. So just be warned, this video is going to be a little bit more complicated, a little bit more of a process than my other tutorials, but I'm sure you'll be able to follow it, so stick with me. And finally, one more clarification, I know this shot that I'm using doesn't make any sense for this effect. I had originally planned to go out and film a shot that made more sense and was more similar to the one used in the original video, but I actually broke my gimbal when I was filming the last tutorial, so I'm without that piece of gear at the moment, so that made it a little bit more difficult to go out and replicate a gimbal shot. So I'm using one that I already had. It doesn't really make sense, but you can get the concept from it. That being said, let's go ahead and hop over onto my computer screen so I can show you how to create this transition. Speaking of my computer, it's a little bit loud, so if you can hear a lot of background noise in this video, that's why. Sorry about that. So here is the shot that we have to work with, and basically what I'm gonna do here is cut out the brown part of the sign and animate it to swing over into the footage and close up this hole in the middle of the sign. So the first thing we need to do is just go ahead and make our clip into a new composite shot. And now what we need to do is find the frame where we want this swinging animation to be finished and the hole in the sign to be completely closed up. I think I'm gonna make that right about two seconds into the clip. So I'll go two seconds in, then duplicate the clip, and then I'm gonna drag it to where it's just one frame. Then I'm gonna use this tool, the rate stretch tool, which basically slows the clip down when you expand it on the timeline, so you have the same frames in that clip, you're just spreading it out. Basically, we're gonna slow this one frame down and extend it to where it covers the entire duration of the clip. So instead of having a clip that moves, we just have this one frame that's frozen for the entire duration of the clip. And what I'm gonna do with this frame is cut out the brown part of the sign so that I can animate it over the rest of the clip. This part's fairly easy. I'm just gonna go in here, zoom in, and use the freehand mask tool to put a good old mask around the edge of the sign. This is pretty much the easy part of the process, so enjoy it while it lasts. That mask looks pretty good, so if we go ahead and hide this bottom layer, we can see that we've isolated that part of the sign, and now we can go in and animate it earlier in the clip. But one thing I'm going to go ahead and do is just feather this mask at least a little bit. Feathering is basically just going to soften up the edges, so I'm going to feather it by maybe one or two pixels. So now that we've finished masking that top layer, we can go ahead and turn the bottom layer back on, and now what we need to do is mask basically the opposite on the bottom layer. We need to keep everything except this brown part, so we're basically separating those two parts of the layer into separate videos. The way I'm going to do that is basically just by copying this mask from the top layer, then pasting it onto the bottom layer, and then I'm going to go over here and just invert it. So now we have the opposite, but we're not quite done yet, because as we can see, this shot is clearly animated, so when we go back into the video, there's an issue here that the mask doesn't move with the rest of the video. So now we get to start the somewhat tedious part of the process, which is animating this mask. So basically I'm going to come into the transform properties of the mask, animate the path, the position, the rotation, and the scale. And then I'm just going to go through every few frames, go back a few frames, and then animate the mask, move it a bit so that it's in the right spot for that frame. And I found it helps with this to turn the mask off so you're not hiding what you're masking out. There's really not like a great fast way to do this process. So I would say just make it a little bit less painful for yourself. Listen to like some music or a podcast. Just listen to something. You'll need it. So after a few minutes, I've completed my mask on this bottom layer of our effect. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for the tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back on. And as we can see, we've basically 
cut out that part of the video and then at the two seconds mark at least we have this clip on the top that will cover it and fill it in. Now the reason I have this set to all line up at two seconds in, so if we go anywhere else we can see it's not quite going to work, but then there's this sweet spot at two seconds in where it clicks and it looks great. The reason I did that is because the animation in this clip is going to take two seconds, so we're going to see different parts of the clip moving around and we're going to see those masks being used and then after two seconds those are going to go away and it's just going to be the original clip. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this top clip so that it ends at the two second mark and then I'm just going to cut this bottom clip and then delete the mask. So basically after that two second mark it's just our original clip. So now we're just gonna not worry about this second part of the clip at all. We're just gonna be focusing on this first two seconds where the animation is supposed to happen. And what I'm gonna do now is address the pretty obvious problem that our top layer is not attached to our bottom layer. And the way I'm gonna fix that is by tracking the bottom layer and then parenting the top layer to that track. So for now, I'm just gonna hide this top layer and just focus on the bottom layer, even turn the mask off. And what I'm gonna do is in the controls tab, I'm gonna click the little plus sign next to tracks to create a new track on this layer. Then I'm gonna go over to the tracking window and I'm gonna change it from a single point track to a two point track. Single point tracks just track the position of an object. So I can track the position of my finger and then attach something to it. But if I have a two point track, then I can track two different fingers and then I would have the rotation and the scale as well. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find two points on the sign to position these tracking points on. For me, I think I'm gonna use these two bolts on either side of the sign. So I'm gonna come over here, drag one tracker to where it's on this one and then drag the other one over here and just start tracking. Your track might not necessarily go perfectly the first time. You might have to, you know, find a new tracking point altogether. Or in my case, at a certain point, I'm gonna need to scale these tracking points down so that they fit the layer a bit more appropriately. And now that I've done that and I've just scaled those down, I can keep going and it's gonna hold onto that track better. Once I've reached the end, I'm gonna go back to where I started my track, that's right around there, and I'm gonna start tracking in the opposite direction. And here, I'm gonna need to do the same thing. Like, eventually, this tracking box is gonna get too small, and I'm gonna need to scale it up just like that as that point gets closer to the camera. So I'll just scale these up, zoom back out, and start tracking it again and just repeat this process until I've tracked through the entire clip. So now that I've tracked through the entire clip, I'm just going to scrub through and make sure the points are staying where they're supposed to be the entire time and they are. The next thing we need to do is use this layer option over here to attach our top layer to the track. And the first thing I'm going to do here is just rename the clips so that it's a little bit easier to find them and to know what we're doing in that option bar. I didn't do it at the beginning of this video because I just kind of forgot and didn't need to, but it's definitely helpful to rename your clips, especially if you have a situation like this where you need to pick them out of a list like this, and it's, you know, not too intuitive to differentiate between clip and clip two. So I'm just gonna rename this to sign, rename this to background. Now that I've renamed my clips, I'm just gonna come back over here to the tracking window and since we use that two point track, I'm gonna enable rotation and scale so we're not stuck with just that one point moving around like I mentioned earlier. And now what you might be tempted to do if you're a beginner with this or it's your first time tracking a clip is just select this layer option and select sign. Just use that layer directly, just attach it directly to the track. So let's just see how that works. I'm gonna go ahead and click apply, then I'm gonna go back to the viewer window over here, and as we can see, we can turn this sign layer back on, and that doesn't look so great, does it? It's a little smaller than it needs to be, and the position's not quite right, but thankfully, this is really easy to fix. I'm just gonna hit Control Z, go back until we can completely undo that, and now I'm gonna add a new 
point layer. And now instead of attaching the sign layer to the track, I'm going to attach that point layer. Now we can just click apply, go back to the viewer window over here, and as we can see our point is following the sign. So what we can do now is go over to our sign layer, turn that back on, and I'm just going to go to the two second mark where it's lined up, and then parent it to the point. And now as we can see, if we turn that bottom layer's mask back on, the sign layer is more or less attached where it's supposed to be. And even though it clearly doesn't look perfect right now, there's a big gap around the edge, what we're gonna do now is animate it. So you're not really gonna notice this big gap in the middle too much. So now it's time to go ahead and start creating this swinging animation. And after all that tracking and masking, this is probably gonna be a pretty painless part of the process for you. So. That's something to look forward to, right? So what I'm gonna do is start out by, well, trimming this point layer because we don't need it to extend past the animated part of the clip. Then I'm just gonna rename it to track because why not? If we tried to create the rotating animation right now, we'd have a pretty difficult time because as we can see, we'd have to rotate this then move it and still it just wouldn't line up it'd just be a mess so instead what we're gonna do is change the anchor point of the clip so basically the anchor point is the central point in the image that that layer is going to rotate around so as we can see right now it's right here next to the T and stay so when we spin this clip around it rotates around that point so instead of having it there we need to move the anchor point to where we want that image to rotate around and for me I think I'm gonna use this bolt at the top of the sign because it kind of just makes sense that if this was rotating it would rotate at the part of it that's attached to this wooden post behind the sign. Basically the way I'm gonna do that is just by adjusting these values so that it lines up with that point. You can zoom in to get it a little bit more exact, get it lined up right in the middle of that spot and then just move it back right around there should do. And now, as you can see, if I change the rotation of this layer, it rotates around that point. So if you look at the original clip, you can basically see that it's animated in such a way that this top layer kind of goes across the screen really fast then looks like it catches on something and swings back and forth a few times before it ends up resting at that final spot. I'm going to start out by animating that swinging effect, and we can't just animate that to happen between the beginning of the clip and when the animation ends. We need to compensate for those first few frames where that layer is going to kind of swing into the shot really fast. So I'm going to go about four or five frames in, then I'm just going to set that as the end point so I know this is where the animation needs to start. Then I'm just gonna go to the very last frame of the animated portion of the clip, and I'll set a keyframe for that layer's rotation at about zero degrees. So at this point, it's stopped rotating, it's right in the middle. Now I'll go back about halfway, and then I'm gonna animate it to be rotated over a little bit this way. And I'm not gonna rotate it too much because I want it to look like at this point that swinging animation is starting to slow down. Then I'll do pretty much the same thing again. I'll just go back halfway from where we were to where the beginning of the animation is. And then I'm gonna rotate it to the other side. So right around here. And I'm gonna rotate it a little bit more to this side than I did before. So it looks like this is faster at the beginning of the animation. Now let's just do the exact same thing one more time go back halfway to where we started and then just animate it over to swing up to this side. And then I'll finally go back to the very first frame of the animation and set it back to right around zero degrees. And now we can animate those first few frames. So I'm gonna set a keyframe for the position, then drag it back to the very first frame of the composition and then move the layer over so that it's completely out of the way. Now I'm just gonna render in this animation and the first time you see this, it's gonna look pretty bad, <laughs> but don't worry about that. We're gonna use this as kind of a trial, see how it looks, then go back and modify some things to get it just right. This is pretty bad and I can see a couple of things that I wanna change with this. The beginning animation where this slides over looks fine. I don't really wanna change anything with that. I think this is swinging so quickly towards the beginning that it just looks unnatural and I'd like to slow it down 
a bit. So I'm going to go into the options for those keyframes and I'm actually just going to delete the first rotation keyframe. And so that I can render this in faster, I'm actually just going to turn the bottom layer off entirely. So we're just looking at this top one and then we can see what we're doing in a little bit more like real time. Even though I made that adjustment, it's still not quite right. As you can see, it's pretty unnatural that this is moving over from left to right and then it starts swinging from right to left. So I'm just gonna go back and I'm gonna change this first keyframe so that the layer is coming in from the right. Right now our shot has a really bad case of just sharp unnatural animation syndrome and the way you fix that is by using something called keyframe interpolation or the value graph or graph editor in your editing software. So what I'm going to do is select the sign layer and then just open the value graph so we can see those rotation and position keyframes. And what I'm going to do now is highlight all of the keyframes for the rotation except the first one. I want that one to be pretty sharp. And then I'm just going to select this circle icon. So what that's going to do is smooth out all those animations so that there's a smooth acceleration and deceleration. And if we play through this, we can see that even though it's not perfect, we would need to go through and fine tune the animation a bit more. This is so much better than what we started with. Instead of looking harsh and artificial like an animation would be expected to, this looks a lot more realistic. Finally, add any of those final details you want to. One big one for me is motion blur, right there. Add your color grade, add that first clip that this shot comes after, and you should be good to go. This isn't quite perfect. There are a couple things that should be changed. For instance, you could go in and adjust the scale and position of this top layer so that it lines up better with the edge of the sign. You could fine tune the animation a bit more to make it a bit more realistic but I think this is enough for you to get the concept of the effect. But that is all for today, and I know this has been a lengthy video, but I hope you learned a lot from it. And if you did, do feel free to share your support by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel. I upload two new filmmaking tutorials every single week. But that's all for today. Keep creating, and I'll see you in the next one. I cannot begin to tell you how many things went wrong while I was trying to film this tutorial. First, I was just struggling with getting these lights set up and getting that, that blue light on the wall especially was just an issue the entire time. Getting the microphone in a good spot where you can at least kind of hear me talking over the sound of my loud ass computer. Right before I started recording the video, I spilled a glass of water all over everything so I had to take everything down. I got the, the paper that I'm using to, to follow off of so I get everything right in the video. Got that wet. It's just been a uh, little bit of a little bit of a mess. So hopefully you appreciate this video.